All right, so at this point, uh, just to show you here, if I run this, um, I've got um, the speech bubble is clickable, and I'm getting some output. Let me explain a little bit more what that output means and how that helps us to then further show um, more, more of the info. So I've got comics to view, and I saw that I'm getting some output in the um, um, Visual Studio console. Also, if I uh, look at my output in, in the Chrome console, is another way to look at it. So if I clicked on Spider-Man, you know, I get something very, very similar. It says the function is running, and then there's an object. Well, this that is being displayed here is the, is the whole row. That's what we've said right here. We've said, uh, console log this comic. Well, that short little phrase, this comic, technically means everything that that row is. Well, everything that that row is, again, comes back from when we said here. We clicked on a particular speech bubble, basically is what this is saying. Let's then uh, reference the whole parent of where that object is. The speech bubble, or the, that cell, is in a whole row. So parent, this whole uh, item here then is saying, the whole row is what we're referencing. So it shows here. There is a row. I clicked on this, and this object is that row. I can look here, and then somewhere here it'll say a bunch of stuff like um, right here, inner HTML. That whole row is, is there. The, the cell for the Hulk, the cell for number one, the cell for that class, and there's the button. So it looks a little bit nicer here maybe to understand it in Chrome. But when I click on any one of these bubbles, so let me click on Superman, it says, okay, you clicked on a row, basically. You clicked on a row. And inside of that object, the, the zero with instance of that object, I guess, I've got inner HTML. Here's the HTML <coughs> that it sees. And then inner text is, well, stripping away the HTML, there's Superman, the cell that said Superman, the cell that said one, two, three, and the cell that said the speech bubble. So in any one of these that I click now, I have a way to determine which of the three did I click on. And now when I save one more, which of the four do I mean? So let's say Amazing Heroes, number 12, 1999, save that. So now I've got a brand new item on a brand new row. If I click on that bubble, it says you clicked on a row. Well, inside of that, there is the data of that row. All of that data internally that we never really look at or know that's there, but it's there. So all of that info is right there. And based on that, OK, ultimately, the point here is I click on that bubble, show me all the extra information that I typed. So at least we have a, a sanity check that this is on its way, that I've clicked on a particular bubble, which represents a particular row. And all of that, this comic represents that whole, uh, that whole row. So next line, we're going to say here, creating a variable which is temp comic. We clicked on a particular row, which references a particular comic in the database. One object in the pouch database is separated from another object based on the underscore ID. So this comic dot data method. This is a jQuery. Um, oh, this is not, uh, this is a JavaScript method to um, to either read or write something in the data attribute of an object. This represents the whole row. So when we created the row, we said right here, this row is going to have a data dash attribute, data ID attribute, related to the ID 
uh, of that particular comic. So dynamically, we are writing data dash ID equals Superman 123. Data dash ID equals Spider Man 129 behind the scenes when we set this up. So we want to read that, we want to extract it, and that's what we're trying to say here. Give me the ID data dash ID. Basically, that's saying data dash ID. Get the data dash ID of the row we clicked on. So dot data, we're reading. OK, which data? Technically, we can use this because we've got data role. What else do we have with jQuery mobile? Data role, data icon, data transition. So if we <coughs> wanted to read, what was the icon we used? We would do data dash icon. If we wanted to read, what was the animation that might have been used? Data dash transition. So data method is a way to read or write data dash whatever. And we invented data dash ID. There's no such thing as data dash ID in jQuery mobile. <coughs> but data dash anything is a, an HTML5 construct that we can use at will. So we used it to put the ID of the comic embedded in the data of the row, and now we're reading it. So to confirm that works, console log temp comic, no quotes. Displays, or should display, displays the ID of the comics, of the comic in question. In question. In question. Check that in your, uh, run it and check it in, in your console. Because this up here is telling you every single gory detail of that object. The inner HTML, the inner text, the row, the height, the font, everything. But here now I'm saying, give me what is the, what is the information stored in the data dash ID attribute, which should be the underscore ID of that particular comic. Let me take a quick look at mine in the browser. Um, I've already got some comics saved, so I'll click on any comic. I'll look at my console output, and hopefully I see that ID that references a particular comic. Clear my console. I'm going to go over to View Comics. I'm going to click on the first one. I get the output right there. AMA 12 1999. That's what I typed a little while ago. OK, for Hulk, the very first one I saved. If I click on that one, I'm seeing the ID, the data dash ID <laughs> was HUL 111 or 1 and then 1963. You can also see it in a different way if you F12 in, in Chrome, just to see it in a kind of different way. And there it is also. That's what that should, should look like. Within the, uh, the object, when you open up the object, where did you find the inner HTML and all of the stuff that looks anywhere close to the comic information? <laughs> I couldn't find it. It was inside of. I just noticed Chrome showed it two different ways, which is annoying. But let me let me pull it up again. Um, it was in the zero width, in the zero width uh, property of that, and then just drilling down a little bit deeper, it's going to be in there somewhere. Let me check on mine. Yeah, let me let me double check on mine. So view comics. So you see here. Uh, it's showing it to me here. You might see it slightly different, which I just saw it a moment ago. It's showing it to me like this. 
I'll show that in a moment. So I'm looking at it here. I look at the zero width uh, property of it, and it's in here. It's going to be in here somewhere. Uh, data dash ID. Um, I mean, I get the TR on the zero width element, but I don't get anything. Yeah, the second time I noticed the second time. It's sizzle one fifty. <laughs> I saw that too a moment ago. This is this is, uh, this is a bug that I've seen with Chrome that sometimes it displays these objects as like nice views of an object, and then sometimes as that weird view that you're looking at. And I'm trying to make it look like yours, <coughs> which I had a moment ago, but now it doesn't want to do it. So it's going to be in there somewhere in the prototype or somewhere. I I know it is in the prototype. Somewhere in there, I think and we can do. What did you say right there, Travis? Uh, zero attributes. 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 Data ID. Okay, yeah, that's one place. Uh, attributes. Um, let's see. What if I refresh this? Sometimes refreshing. Yeah, it's attributes directly under the zero element? Yes, right there. But again, computers are great when they behave. Um, and context. right here. Yeah, let's move on. It is there, but I'm not sure why this, you know, it is showing it either in the pretty way that I have up right now, or it's showing it in the not so pretty way that, that you're seeing it there. So I'm trying to force it to look like that, but I can't oh, quite see it, but we'll it is there. Yes. So, oh, the, yeah. what's that? No? Okay, so um, I'm getting. Uh, the data ID. Hopefully, that's why I would also force some console output to try to see that I'm getting what what I expect. But moving forward here, let me see. Okay, so we've got this. Um, we've got the um, console log. Okay, so if we've got that whole row, ultimately this comic means the whole row. But then we said temp comic. I only need the ID of that row. Well, that ID uh, references the particular comic in the database, in the pouch database. So with that ID, we can start to do db.get temp comic with a callback function that we've used, that we've seen over and over. Failure success. Use the temp comic variable based on data dash ID, which references um, dot underscore ID of my comic data. Use the temp comic variable to get one comic from the from pouch.
So we've used db.get a little bit before. Now it's more important for us. But we had uh, db.alldocs that got all of the data out of the database to display that whole table. We don't need that all now. We need one comic from the database. So .get is the method of pouchdb, the command in pouchdb that lets us get one comic. We get it by referencing its underscore ID. Temp comic is a variable that holds the underscore ID. So as we've seen before, whenever we try to do any pouch uh, method, any command, we get a failure or a success. So since we've done this a few times, we need to do again the if failure or else success. So I'm going to break those curly braces. I'm going to make a note and of um, d, uh, dot get. And what's inside of those curly braces is the usual if, else. <coughs> if failure, as we've done several times. So the whole point of us trying to get the comic from the database is to display all of that info on screen. We only have, on the parent table, we've only got the name of the comic and the title of the comic. This whole point here is to display the um, publisher and the, and the note and all that good stuff. put some console output saying couldn't show the comic whatever that failure message is console log Showing comic success. So here again, we have these uh, we have these objects. There they have kind of a basic name. There was a failure. It was success. Well, that object of failure has its own built-in properties and methods. And this particular success one, that success object pouch automatically when we do get, it got the comic. It stored it in success, and then we're going to use it right here because that's the one that has success.title, success.comment, success.publisher, right? All of those fields that we created for the comic. On screen, We'll write it basically like this first. We're going to reference something on screen, and we're going to write HTML into it. We'll work backwards. <coughs> what we're going to write on screen is name plus success.title. The title of the comic 
is a property of the success object which we got from successfully trying to get a particular comic. Show me the title of the particular comic on screen somehow, which we'll fill in in a moment. So we've got a, uh, we've got a placeholder in the HTML. In the HTML file, we've got that, we've got that uh, section, we've got that screen that we created, where we're, saying, where we're displaying the name, uh, the publisher, and all of that. I want to display the, um, the title. Well, the way we'll do this is, remember we've got in the HTML, view comics info. We've got this div. We've got the first paragraph. This is where I wanted to display Spider-Man. Number 12, 1963, Marvel, etc. I've got these paragraphs inside of a div. Div view comics info. It's an ID. So inside of this jQuery selector, in quotes, <coughs> pound div view comics info. Let's write the title in the name field. That's not specific enough. That is referencing the whole div. But that div has a paragraph for title, a paragraph for number, a paragraph for year. So this trick here, space inside of the quotes, P for paragraph. So here we're saying, OK, let's write in the paragraph, in this div, this HTML. Uh, not specific enough still. We've got lots of paragraphs. So here we're then going to do colon, EQ, parentheses, 0. The parenthesis of the paragraph that equals the 0 with 1, because we start counting from 0, right? So now we're saying, in the first paragraph, all of that is in the first paragraph, in this div, write this HTML, which is the title of the particular comic in question. That's an EQ, equals, and that's a 0. So a little bit of grunt work. Well, let's write it longhand first, then we'll copy and paste little bit of longhand first, a little bit of grunt work. OK, we've got the second uh, one, which is uh, number, I guess. What's the second one? Uh, yeah, number. Number plus dot success dot number. I have the number uh, property of my success object, of my comic object. So now I want to display the number. Where in the same thing, inside of the parent div space paragraph equals one, the second paragraph. So in quotes, pound div view comics info space paragraph pseudo selector eq equals one. So zero one the second paragraph. In the second paragraph, we'll write the number of the comic. If that makes sense, then we would copy and paste. If it doesn't, I would write it longhand, just to maybe hammer it home. Because then the next one is going to be div view comics info paragraph equals two HTML method success dot uh, year. Is that the next one? Yeah. Number, name, number, year, publisher, notes. We don't have barcode yet. Before I write the other ones, note. Select the zero width paragraph in the uh, parent div. Write HTML there. Select the first 
paragraph in the parent div, write HTML there, etc. So all of this is uh, jQuery, right? We've used the dollar symbol selector before. We're selecting, we're targeting, we're, we're searching for something in the HTML. We're searching for where is there this ID? Where is this unique ID? Uh, specifically, uh, a child element, a paragraph, which is its, which equals to the first paragraph, the third paragraph, the twentieth paragraph. Once we've targeted, once we've selected the particular HTML node, then we write some uh, HTML into it with the HTML. Uh, property or uh, the HTML method of uh, jQuery and that should display the number and such uh, you can write all the ones that are necessary or you can test what you've got so far I know maybe if it makes sense I want to do them all but maybe I would test it with a couple first to see if it's on track and then add the next ones I want to give that a shot oh uh, it's actually not going to display just yet because we need to then make the window pop up so I'm gonna I'm going to add all those others in a moment, TBD. Ultimately, uh, or TBA to be added. Ultimately, after all of those things are filled in, OK, great, that those placeholders are filled in. Great, but we have no way to display it yet. We do. We have the uh, jQuery uh, mobile method to make a screen appear via jQuery mobile, then display that screen. Very peculiar syntax dollar dot mobile dot change page. You know, just one moment. My notes are a little bit different. Uh, page container. Okay, I think we want this one actually. Hmm. Okay, let's write what I was about to write, and then I'll come back to that. Uh, so we're saying here dollar dot mobile dot change page. Which particular page are we talking about? We called it uh, pound uh, pop view uh, comic info comic or comics uh, comics pop view comics info after we fill in all of those paragraphs change the page to view that section comma curly braces quotes roll colon space dialogue make it pop up like a dialog box. Otherwise, it would have popped up like a full screen section. I want it to pop up like a dialog box. So we've got a section, pound, pop view. Let's change the page after we fill in those fields, make it display like a dialogue. I'm going to do a quick run on that, see how it looks. I don't have all of my fields filled in yet. That's, I'm going to do that in a moment. That's why it's TBD. But I, wanna, I have a couple there that I hope to see something, at least. Make sure you've got this part here, or else nothing will display because we never told it to pop up. Let <coughs> me confirm mine works, and then I'll go back to the code. New comics, Amazing Heroes. Click on that, pop up. I'm gonna fix a few things, of course, but Amazing Heroes number twelve. Got your delete, got your edit. Click another one. There's Hulk, Spider-Man. Superman. So I'm going to 
continue here. I've got these other fields, paragraph field or name field, um, and the rest. So I'm going to fill all of those in. I'm going to pause here to make sure this works.